I was, I mean, you've played abroad before, so uh -huh. how does the BBL compare to over, overseas, would you say? Um, well, I played in Switzerland my first year and then Romania and... Um, I mean, I didn't really... Uh, the BBL definitely has more of a control over the media and with BBL TV and they have more control over um, like press releases, all that different things, all that different stuff. And um, in those other leagues, it was kind of just behind the scenes and mm -hmm. those type of things were kind of done by the, the local media or the actually almost the government d doing that t those kind of things. Mm -hmm. But they uh, here it seems like it's kind of like a... Very public. All in one kind of ownership. But do you prefer it that way, or yeah. do you prefer it how it's run abroad? No, I, d I, I definitely prefer the way the yeah. BBL is. I mean, it's, it's, it's done really well. The press releases, the how they do the team of the week, the player mm -hmm. of the month, all those different things. It's I think really it's, engaged. Yeah, I think really, it's. it's really I think important. it's it's better than the two leagues that I played in before. But I mean, just um, it's definitely more public. Is it almost? Does that come down to club level as well? Do you feel the clubs are all more connected as like? Promoting the league together as well from a player status. Yeah, I, I can see. I can see how that adds to what I'm saying. Like the, the teams own the BBL, so they're going to want to promote it mm. themselves. So I mean, in, in the other leagues that I played in, it was more of they. I'm not I, actually. I'm not even sure how they they ran their leagues 100. percent But I mean, it wasn't anything like where the teams own the leagues and promoted it all all together. Mm. So. What do you think could be improved about the BBL? Obviously, uh, taking into account you play in it, you don't want to say anything too controversial. One, no, yeah. No, I just, I think, <laughs> well, it depends. <laughs> what you want to say. Uh, yeah, no, I think uh, BBL is really like it's the only big time league I've played mm -hmm. in. But I think it's really good. I used to watch the BBL before I actually played in it when I was just playing for London United before Surrey. And um, one thing that I think was made them really stand out, or not really stand out, but one thing that made them really popular and have more people engage and like was really good was when they had the. Um, Sponsorship with like Sky, Sky Sports. Yeah, when it used to be shown. When it used to yeah. like every Sunday they'd cover like Sky Sports would cover like two games or something, and it was it was good because then like don't get me wrong, the BBL TV is a great idea. Like you can go back watch the games anytime you want. Like, it's it's a really good thing. But when it was on coverage on Sky, like like for non sport non basketball fans but sports fans, like they could just be flicking through a channel and just like you know, oh like sport basketball let me just watch it you know and then just slowly so builds it's more up. like grabbing the casual viewer yeah and getting them hooked that way rather than making them pay like yeah uh, like not even extortionate amount that's i think it's a really good deal and bbl tv is a like really good thing like mm. they cover 33 games or something uh per season which is really good but then again if they had it like sunday and i think i don't know because i'm like i'm not into that but mm. i think it may even work out cheaper for them in a way mm. if you just like well it depends what you want because we were just saying that about how it's almost like community for the whole league, and that the BBL TV helps do that with the fans as well. Yeah. But then, would you lose that by going to get a TV deal elsewhere? Yeah. You know, that's true. Like, but I, I wouldn't know because I don't know how many like people have actually bought the BBL yeah. League Pass or anything. So you know, but I, from what I remember, just before I playing in it, uh, when it was on Sky, uh, every Sunday I'd like rush home just to watch it because you know it's like top <laughs> league in top league in like your own country. So you'd love to see like what the potential competition is and future. And it was just really good, like. For example, when the London Lions was at um, uh, Crystal, pa Crystal Palace, Sports. when they used to play in Crystal Palace, every game I watched was without fail, like sold out. So in a way, it's like, oh, even though you can't make it to Crystal Palace, even though it's like a 45-minute bus drive from my house, like, you could still watch it at home and not have to like pay. Or it just you can even record it. Like, yeah, I had Sky Plus. I used to like, record it if I was going to be late. <laughs> so yeah. it's not too bad. So there's been a lot of changes in the BBL throughout the years. One is Surrey United, mm -hmm. you have Gilbert Heat, Surrey Heat, you know, all the different names. How is it now under the Surrey United brand compared to them, would you say? I mean, obviously, you may not have been there but before, but from your knowledge of how Surrey was before Surrey United? Um, I'm, I'm not too sure. Yeah. <laughs> 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 no, well, no, it, it was, I was, like, I think one of the first signings for, mm. like, the new franchise. So it was, it was good for me, but... Um, it was, don't get me wrong, it was a big like gap to fill, like losing Surrey Heat, it was like, yeah, Surrey Heat, because it was Guildford Heat, then Surrey Heat. So like Surrey Heat being not removed, but sort of like just refurbished in a way, and then us having to like step in and fulfill like what they were doing. But they finished fourth before they, yeah. before they like, fold, not folded, but before uh, Coach Jack took over. So it was like, it was a big, big, like, to fill, mm. like a big gap to fill. So. It, there was pressure and it was a difficult first season. Uh, there have been difficult stages, but I think like, I don't know what the behind the scenes was about it, but it was definitely like a big task at hand. Do you think it's a long-term project? 
Surrey United? I, yeah, I think it is. I do believe that it is a long-term project. I also think what uh, Jack, who's obviously uh, part owner of Surrey United, uh, I think he has like great intentions because his he's not like coming in and saying, oh, I just want to come kill the league, win, or pay like, a ridiculous amount of money to bring in all these players. I think he's also thinking about like younger players. Like For example, uh, he has, I think it's like five or something young, really young British players, myself included, in the team. So he's like also trying to help build them, so play in like their top league in their own country and then later on move on to you know, play with like Switzerland or Finland, Finland wherever. Mm -hmm. So building the club and building the whole yeah. aura around the club exactly. from the ground up really. Exactly, and it'd be good. How was it the first season from almost a fan perspective? How has it grown in one season uh, drastically or has it been like a slower growth would you say? In, in the first season it was, obviously everyone, Surrey Heat was like their team, mm. their community there. So it was, there was a lot of like negative attention, especially on the media. Again, like a lot of like, oh, like we want sorry heat back yeah. or everything. But then eventually, like fans just accepted the fact that just it's now sorry United owned by other people, and it's still your local community. Like by all means, we're not saying don't come support. Like we, they have like a lot of fans have come back, and I've read a few messages like personally and on like our Facebook page or the sorry page. Just fans that are oh, like you know the great group of guys like it's fun to watch them play and good atmosphere and everything. So it's got bigger more this season than last season. But then again, the team is better this season than last season. So definitely more. Well, matched by performances this season, you guys performing better than last season as well. Yeah. Has to be said. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you definitely. took Worcester all the way the other week. <laughs> we won't bring up the last one. <laughs> <laughs> we won't bring up that. Until the ball ended up on my hands. That was <laughs> still though to even match a team like Worcester, who were you know. Have, started from the ground of themselves and where they are now, is that how you would like to see Surrey United grow yeah, that way? Definitely, most definitely. I, well, as long as I'm going to be here, I'd happily say that I'll probably stay with Surrey because, you know, I grew up in like the London United, Surrey United thing, so I'll definitely be around. But uh, definitely like Worcester, even that game, like just seeing how Worcester's gone, like the facilities, like we were saying before the game, because we get to the game hours before, we were just like, like we were just all looking at each other like, like, like there's only just basketball lines and I think it was like the handball volleyball lines. <laughs> yeah. like, That's, like, <laughs> he's definitely not stepping out of bounds on this, like, you know, yeah. it's, it's good. I've got to ask you, do you think maybe kind of uh, owning like uh, a, a stadium or uh, like is kind of important within British basketball? So an article this week from Dan Routledge who we'll speak to in a bit about teams need to kind of own the foundations before they can build the team. Uh, yeah, I think one thing that kind of gets overlooked with uh, having a basketball team is how much you need to practice and get in and shoot and everything that comes with that. And yeah. when you don't have access to the gym or you're like uh, not sure if you're going to be able to get in sometimes if there's other things going on. It's, it's badminton's booked, for example, because badminton has a big time. Yeah, or, or, <laughs> it seems to have it everywhere, doesn't it? Badminton. Or you want to stay, stay after and shoot and work on some free throws or something like that and some, I don't know, I'm not even sure what sport they're playing. They come in and they're like, oh, it's, you got to get out. Time's up. If it hits six o'clock, you have to be changed bags, everything out. Yeah. You know, just it's just like a sports gym, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> maybe we should start a badminton show. Yeah, maybe. Maybe there's something there. Do you have a badminton show? Is that something that some people Stick to basketball, guys. We don't want to lose you to the badminton world. We don't want to lose you to that. <laughs> oh. I'm pretty good at badminton, though. <laughs> it must be quite difficult ad adapting to that, but I suppose you find ways around that. Uh, yeah, you definitely, I mean, you just try to show up early and get warmed up before you even get on, get on the court. The court. Yeah. <laughs> Start dribbling on the ball in the <laughs> corner. Like. The good thing with um, Surrey United is we're linked with uh, uh, Buckinghamshire University, yeah. where we train, but obviously we play at the sports park. One thing we have there is um, that we have, as like the basketball players, or as Surrey United, we have uh, like this thing whenever the court is not booked out for badminton mm -hmm. or whatever other sport, that we can just book it because we have like our membership cards mm -hmm. to like the gym and other facilities in the building we can like just over book the court and just we can all go in extra practice by ourselves and it's open till like 12 at night so there's no excuse to like oh i can't go in because it's too late like it's open till 12 so that's also, that's another thing that yeah. i that's another thing that just, i tend to do just like, like the badminton we've got to like, interrupt you there because <laughs> we're going to go through an advert break <laughs> <laughs>